Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 108 of ASP.NET video series. In this video, we'll discuss about raising and consuming date selected event of the calendar user control. This should enable us to understand events and delegates much better. To get the most out of this video series, I strongly recommend to watch parts 106 and 107 from the ASP.NET video series and parts 36 to 39 from C Sharp video series. For your convenience, I have included the links for ASP.NET and C Sharp video series here. So when do we want to raise this date selected event from the calendar user control? Whenever the user selects the date from the calendar, that's when we want to raise this date selected event. The calendar user control as it stands currently has an event already called calendar visibility changed event and that event is raised whenever the visibility of the calendar changes. So what are the steps to create a date selected event from the calendar user control? Obviously, the first step is to create a date selected event arguments class that's going to contain the event data. So let's go ahead and create that class. I'm going to create that class within the calendar user control file. So as you can see here, uh, this class is the calendar user control class itself. And then we have this calendar visibility changed event arguments class which is going to contain the event data for calendar visibility changed event. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a class that's going to contain event data for date selected event. Okay, so public class and I'm going to call this date selected event arguments. Okay, and this is going to inherit from event arguments class. Okay, so what event data is this event going to contain? You know, date selected event, what type of data it contains? It's going to contain the date and time that the user has selected within the calendar control. Okay, so obviously we need a variable of that type to, hail, to hold that data. So I'm going to create a private variable of date time type. And I'm going to call this underscore selected date. Okay, obviously to expose that private field to the external world, we need a public property. So I'm going to create another public property with the same name selected date with a capital S and that's going to expose this private field. And it's going to be a read only property because we don't want to allow users to be changing this property uh, from outside. So return this dot underscore selected date. Okay, finally, we need a constructor which can be used to initialize this private field. So let's go ahead and create that constructor. So public uh, date selected event args. And then to the constructor, we want to pass a parameter. And that parameter is used to initialize the private field. So this underscore uh, this dot underscore selected date is equal to whatever is coming into the parameter. So a very simple class to hold our event data. A private field, a public property and a constructor. Okay, so that's the first step. What's our next step? The next step is to create date selected event handler delegate. And we know that delegates are types of function pointers and the signature of a delegate is very much similar to that of a function. Okay, except that the delegate declaration has a delegate keyword within that. So let's go ahead and create a delegate. And uh, we have discussed about why we need delegates, you know, when we are discussing about uh, calendar visibility changed event. So I would strongly recommend to watch the previous two video sessions before proceeding with this video. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that delegate now. So public. We create the delegate using the delegate keyword. The return type is going to be void. And I'm going to call this date selected event handler delegate. So date selected event handler. OK. And obviously, to this delegate, we need two parameters. The sender parameter is going to tell which object instance is, is raising this event. And obviously, to store event data, the, we need this date selected event arguments object. So object sender and then to contain or to store our event data we have this date selected event arguments class which I'm going to use as parameter for this delegate okay that's it now look at this at this delegate will, will later be actually used to point to an event handler method 
okay and this delegate will then hand over this object you know whatever you see here this object to the event handler method and the event handler method can retrieve you know uh, date selected property from this object and use it the way they want to that's why we actually need to pass that object which contains our event data to this delegate and this sender parameter specifies which instance of this calendar user control is actually raising the event. For example, let's say on a web form I have calendar user control 1, calendar user control 2, etc. Now if I want to know for any reason which instance of this calendar user control raised the event, I use this property, this object within the event handler method. Okay, that's the reason why we need to create this delegate. That's the second step. What's the third step? Create the event itself, date selected event. So what are events? Events are variables of type delegates with an event keyword in front of them. And we discussed about this as well in the previous session. So let's create that event there. Now event, this date selected event, should be part of the calendar user control class. Okay, so we have to create that event inside this calendar user control class. So let me expand that and I want and, and create the event. So just like how we have created this calendar visibility changed event. So public, we use the event keyword and then date selected event handler, that's the delegate. And then my variable or my event name is going to be date selected. Okay, that's the event, that's the third step. What's the fourth step? Create a pr protected virtual method on selection to raise the event. Now we can raise the event directly but we spoke about why it is very important to use this protected virtual method to actually raise the event rather than directly raising that in the previous session. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this protected virtual method to do that. So I'm going to create that protected virtual method and then I'm going to call this method as on date selection. So whenever the user selects a date, what do I actually want to do? I want to pass this date selected event arguments class as a parameter into this function. I'm going to call the instance as e, the variable as e. And now what we need to do, we need to check if date selected event is not null and then there is the event. And again, we discussed about why it's very important to check if if the event is not null before we actually raise the event. So if date selected, if that event is not null, that's when we want to raise the event. Okay, we checked about the importance of this condition. We discussed about the importance of this condition in the previous video session. Okay, so what do we want to do? We simply want to raise the event. Now when you are raising the event, now look at this this event is actually a variable of type this delegate and if you look at that delegate it has got these two parameters so obviously when you are raising that instance it expects those two parameters to be passed in okay so what is this sender sender is nothing but you know if I drag and drop this calendar user control on a web form I will get an instance of this calendar user control calendar user control one maybe okay so so this class is basically raising that event. So sender is going to be this keyword. When you say this, we are, we are actually telling an instance of this class. Okay. And then obviously we need uh, event data as well. And the event data is coming into this method as a parameter. So I'm going to use that E. Okay. So whoever calls this method, they have to pass event data also as a parameter into this function. Okay, so what's the final step? The final step is to actually raise the event. So when do we, when should we raise the event? We raise the event whenever we select the date in the calendar. Okay, so whenever the selection in the calendar changes, that's when we should raise the event. Okay, so obviously when that happens, within the calendar user control, we already have a method calendar one underscore selection change. That's when we retrieve the selected date from the calendar control and we are populating that text box. Okay, so that's when I actually want to raise this selected date event. Okay, so before you raise the event, you have to prepare event data because we need to notify the event handler method what date the end user has selected. And to do that, we have created a class called date selected event arguments class, and I'm going to call that a variable date selected event data is equal to we create an instance of that class and look at this this instance expects a date time that the user has selected okay the constructor is expecting that so we pass 
the selected date from the calendar to that constructor okay and finally what we do we raise the event and to raise the event we have created a method on date selection and this method expects an object of type date selected event arguments which we have here we are going to pass that there that's it look at what's going to happen this on date selection method is called and if you look at that that's a very simple method we have this date selected event arguments which you are passing in as a parameter and this object contains the date that the user has collected so now it should make sense why we have created this delegate you know the event and then this protected virtual method and finally this is where we are actually raising the event okay so we are putting all these pieces together right now okay so that's it we are done raising the event let me go ahead and build this solution the keyboard shortcut is control shift B on the status bar notice that build succeeded so we are done with these five steps created the uh, event so what's our next step let's use that event or consume that event on a web form so let me drag and drop this uh, calendar user control onto a web form so I have this web form 3.aspx at the moment it doesn't have any controls so let me drag and drop this calendar user control onto this web form so we have the calendar user control there and if you look at the source the ID is calendar user control one now to consume the event I mean to hook up the event handler method to date selected event of this calendar user control there are two ways to do that one you can actually do in the HTML or you can do that in code first let's do that in code and then we'll see how to do it that in HTML as well so to do that in code in the page load event of this web form I'm going to hook up the event handler method with the event of the calendar control so what's the ID of this uh, calendar user control it's calendar user control one dot date selected is the event okay look at the symbol lightning bolt as soon as I, I say dot date selected then press space then plus equals and then look at the uh, you know look at Visual Studio it shows the event handler I mean it shows the delegate that we can actually use to hook up the event handler method now I press tab it automatically generates that code I press tab again it generates the event handler method as well okay so let's make this protected and look at this this event handler is actually I mean this delegate is actually used to map uh, this function to map to this function so whenever this date selected in event happens this delegate gets invoked and that delegate is pointing to this function so this function gets invoked when date selected event happens that's it so what do we want to do right now we want to let's say print the selected date so response dot write I'm going to say selected date is equal to whatever date the user has selected. How do I get that selected date? Using this object that's coming into this event handler method. So I simply say e dot selected date, which is nothing but date time. But I want to convert that to a short date string and print that. So let me run this now. So we are actually handling the event, associating the event handler to the event in the code behind file. I come here, select a date. Look at that. Selected date is that. Okay. So we have seen how to do, uh, you know, uh, hook up the event to the event handler in the code behind file. Let's quickly do that. I mean, see how to do that in the HTML. All you have to do is, with an HTML, in this calendar user control on date selected that's when we want to call this particular function that's it so now within the code behind file I don't have the delegate uh, declaration there so when I press in uh, control F5 within HTML we have done the association so now when I run the project I should still be able to you know select the date and that event should be handled look at that it's being handled Okay, so this is a quick refresher for events and delegates in C Sharp. If you want a detailed explanation of you know all these steps, we have spoken about that in the previous two sessions. Please watch uh, those two video sessions. In the next video, we'll discuss about loading user controls dynamically. Now, in this video, if you look at this on this web form at design time, I have the control here. I have an ID for the control here. Okay, but then if I have to load this dynamically at runtime, how do we do that? We're going to talk about that in the next video session. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.